So how can I get help with paying my electric bill? That is the question I'm going to answer in this presentation. Now this presentation will be talking in a general sense about what this program is because the guidelines for this program do change from year to year and I will get further into that a little bit further on in the presentation. Um, but I will be giving some information about our agency that manages this, manages this program. I will also give you contact information so that you can reach out and find out which agency administers this program in your county. So let's go ahead and get started. Today in this presentation, you are going to learn some important things about this social service program. And if you're not paying attention for yourself, pay attention for your neighbors, for your grandparents, for other family members, friends, coworkers, anyone that you think may one day be in need of a program like this. You're going to be aware of it and will be able to direct them to apply for this very important social service program. So in this presentation, I'm going to teach you what this program can do, about the eligibility guidelines, how long the application process typically takes. Again, that depends on your specific situation and various other factors but I'll talk about that in, gen in a general sense. I will talk about some answers to a few frequently asked questions that we get at our agency. And I will talk about how you can apply both with our agency or by applying through another agency elsewhere in the United States. So before we get too far, I think some introductions are in order. My name is Jamie Roth. I'm the Public Relations Manager for Western Illinois Regional Council and Community Action Agency. The Community Action Agency is the agency that administers social service programs like the one I'm going to talk about today. Our agency is located in Macomb, Illinois. That's in the northwestern part of the state. We're at 133 West Jackson Street and our main office number for our social service programs is listed here on the screen, 309-837. 2997, and of course I will list this information again later on in the presentation. So uh, I also want to give a little bit of background about our agency, just very quickly, just so that you know where we're coming from. Our agency has been around for over 30 years, and we have a lot of experience in managing social service programs to help people in need. We are a nonprofit social service organization. Again, we're based in Macomb, Illinois but many of our programs extend throughout a five county area. There are a few exceptions, like for this program I'm going to talk about today. And a few of our popular programs are like a food pantry, the clothing center, home weatherization, which makes homes more energy efficient so that the heat isn't seeping out of homes as much during the winter, minor home modifications for elderly and disabled individuals such as installation of wheelchair ramps, widening doorways for wheelchairs, things like that, and of course, energy bill assistance. We have a wide variety of social service programs. As you can see, these are only a few. So at the end of this presentation, I will have our contact information. If you need a helping hand, give us a call. Let us know what your situation is, and we'll see if we have a program that can help. So the question for today, how can I get help with paying my electric bill? The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program may be able to help you. This is also known as LIHEAP, and that's how I will refer to this program for the remainder of the presentation. This program is available to income eligible households, not businesses. This is only available to households. This program can help with home energy bill payments. It can also help with reconnection of energy service if you happen to have been disconnected or are facing a disconnection notice. So a little bit more about LIHEAP. It is a federal grant program that is available in the United States. Because it is a grant program, that means that if you are eligible, if you turn in all of your documents and receive a benefit, you do not have to pay that benefit back. This program is managed by approved agencies in their respective service areas. 
Again, WIRC, Community Action Agency, manages this program in four counties in Western Illinois, and I'll get into that a little bit later. Typically, this program is offered from October 1st to May 31st. It's really designed to help people with paying their winter home energy costs. If it's typically not offered in the summer, unless there is an extreme life-threatening heat wave, and that does not happen very often. If that does happen, community action agencies around the country will make announcements through local media outlets about that happening. So for the most part, you can expect this program to be available from October 1st to May 31st every year. It's also impacted slightly based on world events. Like recently, we've had the pandemic. I'm recording this in May of 2022 during the pandemic last year because so many people lost their jobs and were financially impacted. The months for that were extended quite a bit and the income guidelines were also increased so more people could apply. So this, the long story short is this program, the guidelines and the time frame may change. So just pay attention to your local media outlets or contact the agency that manages this program in your area to get an update. If you do receive a benefit from this program, the benefit will be paid directly to your utility vendor. You personally will not receive the benefit. It will not go to your bank account, for instance. It will go directly to the energy vendor that you have at the time of your application. So the big question, am I eligible? I will answer that in a general sense because everyone's situation is different. The first question you need to ask yourself is, are you a homeowner or a renter? Again, because businesses are not eligible for this program. So if you're a homeowner or renter, that includes college students who are living off campus, then you may be eligible. Number two, you need to check your income for the, everyone in the household who is working. Your household's total gross income has to fit within the income guidelines set for that program season. Again, that season's from October 1st to May 31st, and those income guidelines do change slightly every year. And I will show you some examples here in just a moment. Where can I find the income guidelines? There's three different places that you can go. First, of course, is our agency's website. Go to wirpc.org slash LIHEAP. We have information that I have in this presentation as well as the income guidelines. We refresh that page every year, so that's a good resource for you to go to in the future or after this presentation if you aren't able to take notes at this time. Another place you can go is the benefits.gov website. Now at the time of this recording, this particular link that I have listed here will take you to the specific page about LIHEAP. That's benefits.gov slash benefit slash 623. If for some reason that link changes in the future, which is of course beyond our control, they are in charge of that. You can go to benefits.gov and search for LIHEAP and find the information that you need. Another option is you can call the National Energy Assistant Referral Project at 1-866 Six seven four six three two seven. They will ask you some questions in order to determine which agency manages this program in your area. So here's an example of some income guidelines that I promised earlier. Now these particular examples, this is what the program income guidelines were from October 1st of 2021 to May 31st of 2022. So again, this will change after May 31st. You cannot rely on this chart to be accurate going forward, but it can be a good guideline, a good give you a good feel for what the income guidelines might be in the future. So at the time of this recording in May of 2022, your household must be at or below 200% of the federal poverty level. And I, I understand that does not really mean much, so I'm gonna show a chart here on the screen. This is based on the number of people in your household, 
It doesn't matter if they're working or not. It's just the total number of people living under your roof. And then your household's 30 day total gross income cannot exceed the amounts on the right hand side of this chart. So for example, if it's just you in the household, your income in a 30 day period, the gross income cannot exceed $2,147 per month. If there's two people in your household, it cannot exceed $2,903 per month. For a three person household, it's 3,660. And for a four person household, it's 4,417. For five or more, if you're watching this in May of 2022, you still have a little bit of time to apply for this. You can visit benefits.gov, that website I gave you earlier for the full income guidelines, or you can contact your local agency, including you can also contact ours if you are in our service area, and I will give you our contact information a little bit later on in the presentation. But that will, this chart will kind of give you an idea of what the income guidelines could be. So you know for a five person or more household, it's going to be more than $4,417 per month. So again, if you fit within these income guidelines, and if you are a household, then you may be eligible for this program. You can also find this income guideline chart that I have right here on our website at wirpc.org slash LIHEAP. And again, we will update this income chart as we are informed about what the income guidelines are for each program season. So what happens when I call to apply? First, the receptionist will ask you a few screening questions. And again, this is from the perspective of our agency. It will probably be similar to this if you contact other agencies around the United States, but it don't, this is not set in stone. So the receptionist will probably ask you how many people live in your household, what county do you live in, and what state do you live in? And what is your household's gross monthly income? It can be an estimate. You don't have to have it down to a penny, but they are just asking these questions to determine if you could be eligible in order to go to the next step in the process. So that next step is if they think you may be eligible, they will ask you to schedule an appointment with a caseworker that will be assigned to you from the agency that you apply to, and they will mail application paperwork to you and you need to fill out that paperwork and return it as soon as possible. That way there are no delays in processing your application. So how long can that application process take? It does depend on the time of year that you call. For our agency during busier times of the year, sometimes our receptionists have to schedule two and three weeks out because our schedules are filling up so quickly. Um, it, fluctuates during the year, of course, but the appointments with your caseworker specifically usually take less than 30 minutes if you have all of your documentation ready to go. After your file is complete, so that means you've turned in everything that your caseworker needs, it could take an additional 30 to 45 days from that point before you hear an official decision. And finally, once that time frame has passed, and if let's say you are approved and you are informed about how much of a benefit you will be awarded, then it's communicated to your energy vendor and it's up to your energy vendor for when the credit is officially applied to your account. If you have any questions about this process at any time, contact the agency that's processing your application and ask them for an update. Um, of course, you can, um, go to um, some of the websites I mentioned earlier if you have some other frequently asked questions that, I'm, that I may not address in this presentation. So what is the moral of the story then? Since sometimes it can take be a lengthy process, apply sooner rather than later. Do not put this off. If you think that you may need help um, or if you know you are on a fixed income, then it's better to get that process started soon. That way there's no stress toward the end um, for getting the paperwork applied on time. So this paperwork that I mentioned, what documentation will I need to submit to my caseworker? 
Number one, copies of pay stubs for everyone in your household that is employed. This is to verify that the income um, limits for your household that you've communicated to us is correct. If you are not working, you will need to sign a zero income affidavit form. Your caseworker will talk to you about that and will um, provide that documentation to you for you to return back. Number two, you need to provide a copy of your recent utility bill. I believe that's self-explanatory, but that's to um, let your caseworker know what your current situation is with paying your bill with your energy vendor. Number three, social security numbers for everyone living in your household. If you do not have social security numbers, tell your caseworker to discuss possible alternatives. Additional documentation may be needed, so please keep that in mind. It all depends on your specific situation, and um, your caseworker will communicate that with you during your appointment. I know that you, some of you may be concerned, especially with the social, social security numbers and turning in all this information. Please be assured your information will be kept confidential. Agencies that administer this program have to be approved to administer this program. It's not just something that anyone can pick up and do. There is a process involved, so your information will be kept confidential. Now we're going to get into some of the frequently asked questions that we receive here at WRC Community Action Agency. Number one, is this program open to renters? I touched on this a little bit earlier, but yes. LIHEAP is open to renters and homeowners. This includes college students who are living off campus. We also strongly, strongly encourage you to apply if you're living on a fixed income. Again, if you're a college student, if you have lost living off campus, um, if you have lost your job or if you've had your hours cut and it doesn't seem like they're going to pick back up again if you are a senior citizen, or if you are disabled, this program is here to help you. Can I have someone call for me? Yes, absolutely. You can appoint what we call a proxy. This person needs to be someone that you trust. It could be a friend, family member, neighbor, whatever. Just make sure that this person is someone that you trust to speak on your behalf. To make this happen, you will need to contact WRC Community Action Agency if you are applying with us. Otherwise, speak with the agency that you are applying with, and they will need to send you a consent form, and that consent form needs to be returned to the office before your appointment. That is a waiver that lets the team know at the agency that you are consenting to let this person speak on your behalf. So what happens after I'm approved and have turned in all of my documentation? We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but again, a one-time payment will be made directly to your energy vendor. It will be shown most likely as a credit on your account. If I am approved, when can I apply again? You can apply again during the next program season. So again, that program season is typically October 1st to May 31st. Sometimes there are what we call priority group enrollment periods. That means that, for instance, certain months are reserved for certain groups of people, like uh, people who are senior citizens are get first chance to make appointments in October. And in November, it opens up to families, for instance. Um, these during the pandemic, again, I'm recording this in May of 2022, those priority group enrollment periods have not existed. Um, it's just been from October 1st, starting October 1st, anyone could apply that applies to any category. All I can say at this moment is to pay attention to announcements from your local agency, pay attention to media releases about this program, because it could change from year to year. Um, you can also just call the agency that manages your program and you can check that with them and they'll be able to let you know when you can start applying for this program. 
So here's an example. Let's pretend that there are no in priority group enrollment periods. Let's say if you got help from LIHEAP in November of 2022, you could apply after October 1st, on or after October 1st of 2023. If I am denied, when can I apply again? That really does depend on the reasoning for the denial. I will speak in a general sense. Usually the biggest reason is because someone is over income. So I'm going to use that as an example. Um, and of course, when if you are denied, you can ask your caseworker for details on your specific situation if it's not addressed in the letter that you will, you will receive detailing why your case was denied. So let's use that example. You are over income. You can apply again during that same program season if and only if you have a significant loss of income after your initial application. So a significant loss that could stem from like a job loss, a divorce, a prolonged reduction in hours at your job. Those are just a few examples. So if you had this fantastic job when you first applied, you were over income and denied. If two months later you have completely lost that job, then you can call the agency that you made the application with to begin with and ask if you can apply again since your income has drastically changed. So how do I apply with WIRC Community Action Agency? You should call our office at 309-837-2997. Our agency manages this program in Hancock, Henderson, McDonough, and Warren counties in Western Illinois. Our office is open 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, excluding holidays. What if I live outside of your agency service area? So these are for people who live outside of that four county area I just mentioned in Western Illinois. You do have options available. You can call the National Energy Assistance Referral Project at 1-866-674 6327. That is the best way for you to find out the agency that manages that program in your area. You could also go to that website I gave to you earlier, the benefits.gov website, and search for LIHEAP. Um, you could also go to that exact URL. Um, at the time of this recording, this specific URL will take you to the LIHEAP page, benefits.gov slash benefit slash 623. So now you know what LIHEAP can do about the eligibility guidelines, how long the application process takes, answers to frequently asked questions about LIHEAP, and how to apply for LIHEAP. You can also find all of this information I mentioned again on our website for the WIRC Community Action Agency at wirpc.org slash LIHEAP. So we really appreciate it if you can help us spread the word about this program you never know if one of your friends a neighbor a co-worker needs a helping hand and they just haven't vocalized that to you that's a free discreet way if you like the video share the video or leave a comment or feedback we'd love to hear from you about what you thought about the presentation and help us spread the word so that more people know that this program is available you can find WRC Community Action Agency on all of these social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course on YouTube. If you search for WRC and CAA in Macomb, Illinois, we should pop up. And we'd love to have you follow us. And we're posting things all the time about social service programs and ways to help the community become a better place and just to improve people's lives. If you happen to come to our office or are in our service area and need to drop off something by hand, this is what our office looks like. We're located near the Macomb Downtown Square in the, this brick building here with the large windows. Again, we are at 133 West Jackson Street in Macomb, Illinois.
Thank you so much for attending this presentation. I hope it was helpful to you or to someone that you know. If you need to reach out to us, again, here is our contact information. Our office line is 309-837-2997. You can also send general questions to wirc at wirpc.org. That's our general questions email. Do not email that address if you want to apply for LIHEAP. The best way to apply is to call that office number. You can also find information on our website, wirpc.org slash LIHEAP. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I will see you in the future. Bye-bye.